I'm Danny Dyer, and this is the Real Football Factories International. I played Tommy Johnson in the film The Football Factory, which is all about football violence. Then I travelled the UK and met the real football firm. Now, I'm going international. Nine countries in two months. Around the hooligan world in 60 days. A whole new level of football violence. We'll be in riots. We'll get tear gas, chased, and even shot at. It's going to be quite a trip. Welcome to the International Football Factories. For this show, I'm sampling the explosive cauldron of Italian football. I mean, this country lives and breathes football. They talk about it with the same passion as a fine wine or a finer woman. In the stadiums, the ultras rule. The modern day Italian gladiators. Welcome to Italy. For this show, I'm traveling deep into the world of the Italian ultras. Italy is a beautiful country, full of culture, full of passion. But when it comes to the beautiful game, there's a fine line between passion and violence. And I'm going to find out why. How can such a beautiful place like this be a stage for such mayhem? My trip will take me to Turin, where I'll meet the Juventus Ultras. They've hated English firms since more than 30 of their fans died in one of the worst football disasters the world has ever seen. I'll also head to the capital, Rome, where I'll go to the world-famous Rome derby. Lazio v Roma in the modern-day Colosseum. You know, I haven't, I haven't experienced nothing yet. Italian ultras are often confused with British hooligans, but they're different. Ultras are not just about violence, they're about displaying their passion. What they call the choreography, a combination of banners, flares, smoke effects, is just absolutely stunning. It is opera, and it's why I hope the ultras never die. But for some ultras, this passion boils over into clashes about respect and defending your club colours. I've flown into Rome a few days before the derby between Roma and Lazio. And it's not easy to enter this closed world of the ultras. No one seems to have seen the football factory over here, so I don't think that's going to help me. But to my surprise, our local fixer used to be an ultra. OK, every country I've been to, um, we get what's known as a fixer, somebody that you know, knows their way around, somebody that speaks the language, somebody that's in the know. Now, they're all very kind of straight goers, usually. I've come to Italy. This is my fixer. His name's Fabiano. He used to run with a Juve lot. He's a proper geezer. I want to just ask him a few questions. Fab, I just want to ask you straight away. Yeah. What is an ultra? Ultra comes, the words come from uh, oltre in Italiano. So it means beyond the limit. But an ultra goes always beyond the limit. Ultimately, it's about passion. Passion, strong, deep, and insane passion. Okay. You're not insane, you're not ultra if you're not insane. How, how important is 
violence and aggression for the ultras. You know? But we don't think about what is, what, is, what is important. We just think that who we are, the flag we represent, we go in a away game, mostly the fans meet rivals. <laughs> Rarely, comparing to English ruling as they give an appointment. Because the hate is so, is so strong. Fabiano's ultra days are long gone. He still supports Italy's biggest club, Juventus. They have some of the most notorious ultras in the country. The Rome derby is still a few days away. So I'm on my way to Turin to meet him. Don't go away, because next up, I come face to face with raw ultra passion. Welcome back to the International Football Factories and to Turin, home of Juventus, the most popular club in Italy. In these parts, the historic club's known as the Old Lady, but I'm here to meet the top boys, and as you all know by now, I'm more interested in what happens off the pitch. Let's have it, my old son. Let's have it. Juventus is the Italian club you love or hate. It's the most successful in Italian league football. And in a similar way to Man United in Britain, it has fans the length and breadth of the country. Tonight, I'm meeting one of their most feared ultra groups, the Drugi. They're named after the ultra-violent gang, the Drugs, from cult film Clockwork Orange. But that's not the reason I'm nervous about meeting them. They have a deep hatred of English firms, born out of one of the darkest days in football history. Heysel was one of the worst football disasters the world has ever seen. 39 people died, 32 of them Italian Juventus fans. The tragedy took place during the 1985 European Cup final between Juventus and English club Liverpool, held in the Heysel Stadium in Belgium. Missiles had earlier been thrown between rival fans, and about an hour before kickoff, a group of Liverpool fans charged across the terraces. Juventus fans retreated, causing a wall to collapse, and innocent people died. A UEFA official present at the game blamed Liverpool fans for the violence, but Liverpool fans have always criticised poor organisation within the stadium. There was never an official inquiry into the causes of the disaster. English clubs were banned from Europe for five years, and Italy's ultras can't forget. Yeah, it's still a very, very raw and open wound. Um, the ultras, if they see themselves as the defenders of the real fan, I think what happened at Heisel, it, it just falls completely into their mindset to see them as the people who almost need to take vengeance for it. And I think the fact that the innocents, the civilians almost, got killed that time, there's always going to be huge bitterness and I think for a long time a desire for revenge. In 1990, the World Cup was staged in Italy. England played in Turin, and the city's ultras saw it as a chance for revenge. The trouble came almost exclusively from gangs of Italian youths out to avenge the Heisel Stadium disaster. And in 2005, Juve faced Liverpool in the Champions League, the first time the teams had met since the disaster. And Juve's ultras were waiting. The police struggled to keep the ultras away from Liverpool's travelling fans.
More than 20 years on, Juve's fans are still affected by the events of that day. The Drugi formed in the wake of the tragedy. At the time of Heysel, they had an English name, the black and white supporters. But after Heysel, they changed it to Italian and eventually became known as the Drugi. Now, um, um, I'm a bit worried, I've got to say. I know these are real hardcore, you know, these are fanatics of the highest level. I know that, um, you know, we all know about the past, the Hazel disaster. You know, their supporters, they lost a lot of lives. That was down to, um, you know, that was down to a football match with an English club. And I don't know what sort of reaction I'm going to get, you know. This is in the back streets of Turin, you know. We're just going to go in, see what's going to happen, see what the vibe is. Hopefully it's going to be sweet, you know. Let's see what they've got to say. We met in the Droogies bar. Everywhere there were images of the Droogs, the violent gang they're named after. And as an Englishman, I didn't exactly get a warm welcome. But three guys agreed to talk to me. I met Mimo, one of the Drugi leaders, Fabio, the group's organizer, and their translator, Christian. What does it mean to be a Drugi ultra? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to be a Drugi? Being a Drugi means being people at the end, people at the end, people at the regular, people at the end, people at the end, people who don't have fear of anyone, of anything. Of anything, and when I say anything, anything. And we're going to beat the shit out of everyone, okay? Okay, it's on me in here, it's on me. The Drugi revel in being hated throughout Italy. We are against everybody. First of all, we are not alliance. Okay. We are alone. No, you know the song, uh, we are alone, yeah, we are yeah, alone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Against everybody, we have no, no, no friend. Okay. No friend. Well. Juventus were relegated from Serie A in 2006 after the club was found guilty in a match-fixing scandal that rocked Italian football. They were stuck in Serie B and stripped of the championship title they won that year. OK, I want to ask you, um, <clears throat> obviously Juventus, big club, how did it feel this season? Being in Serie B, um, how was that for you as a big club? Yeah, sì, sì. Certamente noi abbiamo i nemici sono cambiati, ma non tutti. Perché comunque noi in Serie B abbiamo trovato dei nemici di vecchia data. Quindi in quel qualsiasi campo noi andiamo c'è odio verso di noi. Certi campi sono più caldi, altri meno. Genoa e Napoli, in assoluto, sono i campi dove comunque c'è più odio nei nostri confronti. The Drugi film one of these hostile away trips to Genoa. Because they're usually in different divisions, it was the first time they played each other in more than 10 years. Turin and Genoa are both in the north of Italy. They're traditional rivals, and everyone expected an explosive match. Can you tell me a little bit about what happened uh, with Genoa this season? Has there been a lot of violence? Piccola trasferta proprio. No, oh, Genovani, merda. Merda, merda. Polizia, più merda dei Genovani, polizia. Più merda. Because of their violent reputation, a police escort travels with them to away games. Ci hanno fatto allungare sti bastardi di 50 km, ci hanno fatto arrivare a partita iniziale sti bambini puttani qua. Eh? Già quando siamo arrivati avevamo incazzato, c'eravamo due coglioni così. Perché non ce la facciamo? Che cazzo ridi? Minga ridi pure ti fa, minga c'eravamo i coglioni che c'eravamo per terra ti fa, eravamo già incazzati. When they finally got into the ground, a reception committee wound them up even more. 
they received a barrage of abuse from Genoa fans over the Juve match fixing scandal. Aveva offerto anche un grottesco prologo di striscioni e un assordante urlo, ladri all'ingresso delle squadre in campo. Quando siamo arrivati là abbiamo combinato di tutto, abbiamo spaccato tutto. Genovani, io ti. Even though I'm English, I thought we were getting on fine. They started to open up to me, but that was about to change. 20 years after the Hazel disaster, how do you feel? Um, how do you feel about that? Is it still, is it still very sore? Is it still hurt? Do you still hate? Se tu noi odiamo in particolare modo abbiamo un odio particolare per quelli del Liverpool. Sì, in modo particolare, cioè per tutti gli inglesi, anche per voi che siete qua. Però insomma va bene così stasera per l'intervista. Anche per voi. Gli inglesi tutti, tutti, da là alla Z, a destra e a sinistra. E anche per voi. It was 20 years since high school but the Drugi had not forgotten, and most definitely not forgiven. And I doubt that will change, ever. Turin. But is the Drugi's level of hatred and violence normal among Italian ultras? What about a smaller club with about the same tragic history? You don't know what it's been like. Being someone like you. You don't Along the motorway from Turin is Bergamo, the home of Atalanta Football Club. Not a world famous football club like Juventus, perhaps, but their ultras, Curva Nord, are infamous. They glorify in their status as underdogs, and they've got a close bond with their club and community. Their leader is this man, Boccia a well-known face in the world of the ultras. Roma, Torino, Firenze, sono tifoserie che alla fine tutte grandi, cioè noi vogliamo avere sempre problemi con questi. Noi vogliamo, se non ce li abbiamo, li cerchiamo noi i problemi. Noi ci stanno sul cazzo tutti. In contrast to Juve's nationwide fan base, Atalanta's ultras are very much anchored in the Bergamo community. Gli ultras sono portati a unire una città, sono portati hanno il dovere di far capire qual è il senso vero di uno sport. Atalanta's ultras think Italian football is being corrupted by richer clubs from the big cities. A number of Italian clubs are implicated in the 2006 match fixing scandal but only Juventus were relegated. Perché il calcio oggi è veramente uno schifo, ma la passione vera è ancora tramandata nelle nostre case e noi finché esisteremo la porteremo avanti fino alla fine. But this passion can also result in terrifying football violence. Lo scontro nasce, te l'ho detto prima, non da una delinquenza. Non nasce da quello, nasce da una passione, 
e poi in quello c'è la voglia e la mia droga è quello di picchiarmi con un trust di qualsiasi altra squadra l'avversario, fagli capire che qua comunque non c'è possibilità per te di fare il galletto Atalanta's ultras see themselves as an extended family and their community comes together at a Cova Nord party How do they reconcile this community spirit with the inherent violence of the ultras? Anche se qualcuno lo contesta e giustamente può contestarlo, noi ne siamo consapevoli benissimo di come può andare. Però noi anche in questo caso, più dell'apice dello scontro, è la cosa più bella che noi possiamo avere, perché è una cosa dettata dal cuore, sempre. Italian ultras believe they represent the true heart of Italian football, that they're preserving something special in the game. And the capital Rome is home to one of the great rivalries in world football, where the ultras put on a show for the world to see. After the break, I'm back in Rome for one of the major events of the Serie A calendar, the Rome derby, Lazio v Roma. And I got one of the hottest tickets in town. I'm in Rome and it's Derby Day. Lazio v Roma one of the biggest games in world football. This city is a hotbed of football passion. And its two major teams have a fierce and historic rivalry. Roma are traditionally the team of the urban working class. Lazio's stronghold has been the more affluent middle class suburbs. For decades they've clashed in and around the Stadio Olimpico, the stadium they share. But before going to the game, I wanted to meet Lazio's ultras, the Iriducibli. They were formed in 1987 and are more than 6,000 strong. They have a right-wing reputation. Fascist symbols have been frequently seen on the terraces. In 2005, Paolo Di Canio, a former Lazio Ultra who became an iconic player for the club, was pictured doing a Roman salute to the Lazio fans. This fascist image shocked the football world. The Iriducibli are the most famous ultras in Italy because they're the most controversial and it's not just because of their politics. They've become a brand like Armani, Louis Vuitton. They make these wonderful jumpers with the Iriducibli on them which are more popular than the ones that say Lazio on them. So I think there's a level of resentment from some of the other ultras groups. They're seen as sellouts. I wanted to meet one of the leaders of the Iriducibli, Fabrizio, to follow. But that was going to be a problem. At the time of filming, Fabrizio and three others were in prison facing charges of intimidation and attempted extortion. They had backed a plan to overthrow the Lazio president. The president had cancelled Iriducibli privileges, a thousand season tickets and money for choreographies, which the club had paid for in the past. I think if you wanted to find an example of ultra power run mad, it'd be hard to, to find a better example than the Iridu Chibale. The arrests were the big talking point before the derby. 
and there was one place it was the sole topic of discussion. Here is Chibli's own radio program. It's called Voice of the North Stand, named after the Lazio Terrace in the Stadio Olimpico and broadcast across the city. It's presented by Gianluca Trione. Per riducibili una parola che significa praticamente persone che non si arrendono mai o che comunque non si riescono a ridurre, quindi a... The radio program is a forum for the ultras to dispute the claims of attempted extortion levered against their leaders. Secondo noi non è vero poiché i ragazzi hanno agito alla luce del sole, tra l'altro parlando per radio, facendo interviste. Si credeva e si sperava che la Lazio potesse andare a stare meglio, solo questo è il motivo. E per questo la tifoseria laziale non fa più il tifo da inizio del campionato. Since the arrests, Lazio's ultras had held a silent protest inside the stadium. It's not unusual for Lazio's ultras to flex their muscles in this way. They like to show their power. And a silent protest means no singing and no chanting on the terraces. Complete silence. But tonight was the Rome derby, and that silence was about to be broken. Even from his prison cell, Fabrizio Tofolo addressed his ultras on the eve of the derby. A letter from him was read out on air. E vi invito a tornare a tifare in, quello, in questa occasione, tifando a squarciagola per la maglia, solo per la maglia e l'amata Lazio. A voi vi chiedo un segno di gratitudine che in questa nostra battaglia e giorni difficili è andata oltre la fede calcistica, e parliamo dei romanisti, di tifare solo ed esclusivamente la nostra Lazio. Lazio's ultras had been given their orders and in just a few hours time I was going to be in the middle of the action. A couple of hours before kickoff, I headed for the ground. The Derby atmosphere was already building. I'm about to experience something unique, something that's, you know, very special. I mean, I can't wait. This is something I've been looking forward to for a long time. And we're also going to try something a little bit different here, something a little bit mad, something we've never done in any other country. I'm going to try and keep this low. I'm going to start the first half with Roma, yeah? Get a taste for it. Then we're going to try and come out, we'll run round, run round to the other side, get in the Lazio and experience the second half of Lazio. Now, this is like probably impossible. This is blagging at the highest level. Let me tell you something now, we're going to die trying. I cannot wait. Bring it on. But before my plan could kick into action, I had to meet Roma's ultras group, the boys. The boys formed in 1972, making them Roma's oldest ultras group. They're also right wing, and they have their own place on the middle of the Roma terrace, where only they can stand, and where I hope to join them for the first time. Gian Paolo, one of their leaders, has agreed to meet me before the match. Right, so I'm going to go and meet Gian Paolo now, who's a Roma fan, one of the top boys. He's actually banned from going in. So he usually stands outside, but I'm going to be going in with his boys, so I'm just going to go and meet him, greet him. Just want to break a bit of ground with him, you know? I won't be telling him nothing about slipping around the other side, I can assure you of that. Giampaolo, thank you, grazie, I really appreciate this. I know there's a lot of police around, I'll keep this very short and sweet. Firstly, uh, today's a big match, yeah. and uh, is it the ultimate battle of the ultras? It was difficult to talk outside the stadium. Gian Paolo was banned, and police were everywhere. 
so he led us to a bar nearby for a chat. I asked him again about what would happen at the derby. Sento dentro che sarà un derby particolare, ma se ti potessi dire adesso come sarà, è il derby imprevedibile, è bello anche così. C'è sempre stato un desiderio di prevalere, di, di radicare una, una prevalenza cittadina a, a livello territoriale. Quindi questo ha portato inevitabilmente, essendo anche comunque persone eh, di strada, a volte anche a contratti fisici. Giampaolo was banned after being arrested at the 2004 derby. Fights broke out with police and chaos erupted around the stadium. Ci furono all'esterno dello stadio violenti, violenti scontri e si sparse questa voce fondata, cioè la gente veramente ci credeva di un ragazzo che, che era rimasto ucciso in incidenti. The rumor was that a boy was run over by a police car. It turned out not to be true, but it led to an unprecedented situation. Roma captain Totti was told about the rumors sweeping the stadium. Both Roma and Lazio Ultras wanted the game to be abandoned, and for safety reasons, it was. Quindi vennero ritirati gli striscioni, la partita venne sospesa. A seguito di questo nacquero violenti incidenti, poi la notizia si rivelò infondata, però io personalmente e parecchi altri ragazzi fummo arrestati per questa cosa. Violence continued late into the night. Giampaolo couldn't join me for tonight's game because of the ban, but I'm going to be a guest of his ultras, the boys, for the first half anyway. Okay, this is it at the moment. My chaps are waiting around the corner for me, yeah, they're all ready to go in. I'm mic'd up. Now, I don't know whether I'm going to get in with this mic, we don't know if we're going to get in with this camera. This is security of the highest level for obvious reasons. This is the Rome Derby, you know, they don't muck about here. I'm so excited about this, I cannot explain to you. The tension, the noise from the ground is unbelievable. I've got one more thing to say. Bellissimo. Ciao. I walked onto the stand. It was obvious the ultras were running the show. There was no sign of police or stewards. I was in the boys' own section. felt like a VIP area. Just minutes before kickoff, Roma legend Marco Del Vecchio arrived in our section to meet the ultras. Imagine the likes of Trevor Brooking greeting West Ham's ICF down at Upton Park. This I'm in with the top fellas here, man. This is proper exclusive, roped off kind of thing. We got a few dodgy looks as we walked in. I'm right around a few naughty people there. You know, I'm very... I'm a bit dizzy, I don't know who's around me. I'm, I'm a bit like, a few of them are not happy about it. But I'm just, just oh, honestly, words cannot describe this feeling. Honestly, this is powerful stuff. As kickoff approached, the whole place erupted. The stadium is home to both Roma and Lazio. Roma always have this end, called Curva Sud, and Lazio always stand on the opposite terrace, Curva Nord. As the irreducibly leaders requested, their ultras came to life again for the derby. But Roma's end wasn't going to be outdone. Yeah. 
when the game finally began. I thought the stadium was going to explode. Here we go, let's have it. it didn't take long for there to be a standoff in a section of the stadium by the halfway line. With Roma Ultras at one end and Lazio's at the other, separated by a line of riot police. In the midst of all this chaos, there was actually a match being played on the pitch, and Lazio took a first half lead. Ledesma with the effort! Oh, how about that? Christian Ledesma, what a goal! Roma's end was stunned. <laughs> After the goal, there was more crowd trouble. Half time, the stadium was a cauldron of tension, both on and off the pitch. Now it was time for me to see the other side of this epic derby. I felt the passion of Roma's ultras. But how would Lazio's ultras receive me on their curva for the second half? And would I even make it through the gate? at the Rome Derby, Lazio v Roma. I've just left the Roma end. I'm about to try and join Lazio's ultras for the second half. As I left, it was 1-0 to Lazio. Right, OK, I've had to slip that back on. We've slipped out, it's now half-time. Lazio just scored wide to death, an unbelievable goal. What are we doing there, son? Now, we're in a bit of a mad rush here. The old build, the old build just smashing bottles everywhere, frying them up in the air. What's your head, man? Fucking hell, what are they doing? They were breaking bottles so they couldn't be hurled as missiles after the game. To get past security, we had to hide the camera. This is our man, this is our man. I think we're going to pull it off. A little bit clicky, a bit paranoid. You don't move around you, man. We're, we're, you know, it's quite, it's, I feel a bit like um, some sort of snake, a bit too fast coming out of there. Like, uh, and now I'm going, hey, look at the goal. For the second half, I joined Lazio's ultras, the Ibiduchibli. For the ultras, this derby was a major event. Their leader was in prison, and from his prison cell, he'd urged the ultras to put on a show for the world to see. But before I could really get a feel for the Lazio end, this happened. The Lazio captain celebrates in front of the Lazio fans. Roma's fans could only watch their rivals celebrate. And this game's intense passion could always spill over into violence. But it wasn't over yet. Options through the middle, offside flag stays down.
Lazio won 3 0. Despair at one end, joy at the other. I've realised how important it is to these people, how they were celebrating. It was like every Christmas rolled into one, every birthday. I can't imagine how Roma are feeling. My heart goes out to you. Good night. I left Rome. The operatic passion of the derby has been unforgettable. But for how long will it be like this? Some say the very existence of the ultras is now under threat. Two months later, another Italian derby, this time in Sicily, turned to tragedy and shocked the nation. Policeman Filippo Ricciti was killed during clashes at a game between Catania and Palermo and 62 other policemen were injured. The government immediately suspended all football games across Italy for a week while they considered their next move. It's certainly what the Italian authorities are trying to do is eradicate the ultras. They regard the ultras as the real problem in football, one of the real problems with football. And the Italian ultras regard themselves as, you know, the, the last last the Mexicans, you know, the last stronghold of the proper spirit of football. There's a battle, I guess. There are elements even of civil war in there. The authorities have declared war on the ultras. Now under new regulations, flares and fireworks have been banned at matches. And new look stadia are planned, which are easier to police, like those in the UK but this won't be an easy war to win. Just weeks after the Sicily tragedy, English fans felt the brunt of an Italian angry police when Man United faced Roma in the Champions League. The death of Filippo Ratchetti has given the police an even more uncompromising attitude. From what I've learned on my trip, it's clear the ultras won't go down without a fight. They live and breathe this ultra passion. Quando uno ha ragione, va avanti, va avanti e non si ferma. Finché se ha questa mentalità noi non moriremo mai, 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 mai. Poi se qualcuno paga, ben venga anche il pagare, ma siamo consapevoli, non ce ne frega niente. Non è una moda fare l'ultras, non te lo dice il dottore alla mattina. È uno stile di vita. Was that Eric Cantona? Looks a lot like him, except he's speaking Italian and talking about seagulls following the trawler. Anyway, um, get on to bravo.co.uk forward slash factories for exclusive football factories footage. Oh, and check out the bloopers reel, it's fantastic. We're back after the break with Brits Behind Bars. <laughs> 